So now we've set up our coot, we're ready to do some work. Let's load the tutorial data and we're going to validate and do some model building on this structure. First of all, let's validate. Um, so we loaded in the validation dynamic validation dialog from Curlew, so let's activate it. So validate atom uh, overlap peptides and C betas. There we go. So we get this little dialog here and we'll work our way through this list, um, fixing the problems um, on the list. So they work uh, numerically, so they're ordered numerically. So residue uh, A2 is problematic. Let's go and have a look. And we can see that um, when we examine the situation, it's not really A2 that's wrong. It's this uh, phenylalanine that's wrong. So we need to adjust the position of the phenylalanine. Now, uh, one of the tools that we added was go to blob. And what that means is instead of having me, instead of me having to click on an atom to center there, I can go to the density that surrounds it. And that's easier to uh, put my mouse in the right position. So um, instead of clicking on that C beta, I'm just going to put my cursor or my, my uh, arrow key here, my arrow cursor, I suppose, um, around that sort of area and then press the G key and that brings it to the center of the screen. You see this blob here, for example, this one here. If I wanted to bring that to the, to the center of the screen, I press, I point at it, press the G key, press U key to go back again. Right, anyway, so here we are at the CP to position of this phenyl alanine, and we want to um, change the rotomer. So J for autofit rotomer, and then Shift R to refine the region. We saw there that there was a problem at residue 41. Uh, we'll come to that in just a moment. So 32 first. And this looks like it says it's an unusual rotomer. So what we can do here is use Shift Q for the rotomer dialog. And then um, with the focus in this window, the graphics window, I'm going to use dot and comma. There we go. That seems like a more plausible one. So let's accept that. And uh, now we have an atom overlap. So let's refine it. And there we go. Go. It's all fixed. Right. Um, let's use also, we can see here, let's, first of all, first of all, we look down this list, 40, 41, 41, 41, 41, 41, 42. There's lots of problems in that region. Um, that's been identified by this, uh, this validation tool. We can also look at the Ramachandran plot. And we can see here that the two outliers are 41 and 42. Okay. So we need to go and fix that. So how do we navigate to residue 41? We could click this button, but I want to show you uh, another way. And that's with control G, control G for golf. And what I'm going to do is type the residue number here. So 41. And we can see here uh, that there's something going on. Um, we can see the red trapezium for a uh, cis peptide in front of a residue that's not a proline and the yellow uh, twisted ribbon here for um, a twisted peptide. A twisted trans, that has to say. Right, I want to get rid of the density. <laughs> I want to reduce the amount of greenness and redness on the screen. So I want to increase the contour level. So Shift M, scroll it away. And then Shift M means that I can go back to scrolling the blue map. Right, that's a bit clearer. Um, now I'm I don't want to click on the atoms, right? So let's use Spherifine. It has a go at trying to fit it in, and um, it, oops, let me just put that dialog here so you can see it. Um, but it hasn't done a good job, and there are balls which are red, and they are telling us that those have. Uh, low Ramachandran plot probability. So I could pull on these atoms, but it's easier to flip the peptides using these buttons here. Having done so, you can see that it flips it and now fits the density. Uh, we can see if we look a little closely that this side chain is in the wrong rotomer, but the main chain looks good now. To fix the rotomer, we could click and drag it, but we could also interactively back rub. Fit it. 
which is uh, the method I prefer. So when we've done that, just press return. That's all cleared up. Now this all this dialogue is now almost all gone now. There's a couple of more things to fix. Let's have a look at Residue 72. So it says there are side chain atoms missing, or there's one of them. Um, the S gamma is missing, but also there's a main chain nitrogen. So the way to fix that is to delete the residue and then add one. So delete it with Control D, add one with Y, and then refine it with Shift R. So green balls mean good Ramachandran. We have a, a alanine here. Now we also added the uh, keyboard mutate. So all we need to do for that is just type in the letter for cysteine and then we can mutate it to a cysteine and refine it. And in this case, there is an alternate confirmation. So we can add that here. There's no key binding for that. So we just add it in, pop it down to about 0.4 and then Shift R refines both conformers, splitting the CB to position. Right, and so that's that one fixed, and now we've got one left, 91. We examine what's going on here, and um, what we're looking at is a backwards Lucy. Uh, if we turn on backwards, if we turn on back rub rotamers, um, then that uh, will change the algorithm for uh, rotamer fitting to a more conservative one. It doesn't always work, and doesn't work at the end of chains. That's why it's not on by default. Uh, but anyway, so if I press J for auto fit, there it is, turns it around. Okay, so this has now cleared up all our model building validation issues. So that's the model corrected, but we haven't yet uh, shown that all of the uh, density is f accounted for by a, uh, an atomic model. Um, how do we investigate that? Um, unmodeled blobs. Validate unmodeled blobs and then we'll just choose the defaults. It tells us there are three unmodeled blobs sorted by size. Uh, oh, to change the uh, clipping I'm doing control right mouse click and drag left to right. Um, so there's a bit of uh, protein that was missing on the blob number one, ligand on blob number two and a uh, something tetrahedral which is um, a sulfate, in fact, uh, because the crystallization conditions are ammonium sulfate. So this is a sulfate. And what we want to do is put sulfate in here. So first of all, let's do that. Calculate modeling, add other solvent molecules, add a sulfate to this. It did a jiggle fit and now uh, fits in that density blob, blob number two. Now we want to fit the ligand. Uh, let's do file search one in my library for guanosine phosphate monophosphate and look down the list until the find we find the one that we want. It's called 3GP. Well, we did that by checking the name and the chemistry. <laughs> uh, I've done that before though, of course. <laughs> OK, so this is the ligand we want to fit into this blob. Um, the way we're going to do that is to use the ligand fitting tool. So let's undisplay the ligand for now. Uh, well, the reference ligand. And we, let's try and find oops, that ligand in the map. Well, actually, we don't need to search all of the map. We, we can say that it's right here. So we'll select the ligand. We won't make it flexible. We'll search right here, and then we'll find ligands. OK, it says one ligand found. Um, let's have a look. Well, not bad, not bad, not bad. The ribose is good, the phosphate's good, the, the base is good. But this over here is not so good. So let me change the contour level. There we go. We can see that hydroxymethyl is pointing in the wrong direction. And I want to correct it. And I want to do this without pulling on any atoms. So Shift R activates the refinement for this residue. It's in its own molecule. And um, what we want to do is rotate about that bond there, rotate about this bond here. Well, I could do it by pulling, but I could also use the hybridization aware um, torsion manipulation tool. It's called Jed Flip. Um, and uh, activate that to do the um, uh, uh, transformation of the coordinates. 
so you can see these are both sp3 hybridized carbons uh, so the rotation is 120 degrees that's the minimum um, so if i turn on jet flip with shift f it rotates 120 degrees but okay so it wasn't the right 120 degrees so i just flip it again and there it goes in you can see now that it fits its little tube of density. Not much density there, but rather here than anywhere else. Okay, now we need to include that into our main molecule. So merge molecules, the fitted ligand into zero. Okay, so that's blob one, two work done, blob number one. Let's do it a different way. Let's just give ourselves a little bit more density to play with. Okay, so what we want to do here is to extend the chain. So uh, Y adds a residue, Shift R does a refinement. Does P centers on the closest protein atom so that when I do space, it moves on to the next one. Um, so that looks good for an alanine. We will add another residue there. That looks good for an alanine. We'll just give it a bit of tidying up. Green means good Ramachandran, as I said before. Uh, so 95, we've got one more to go, and we'll do Y, refine, and what we notice uh, is that it's the wrong way around. So we need to change the orientation of the side chain so that the C beta and S gamma are in this green blob rather than the main chain. So I'm looking down the bond, give it a bit of rotation, control shift uh, uh, left arrow in this case, control shift left arrow, and now I want to mutate this thing to a cysteine. So shift C, mutate it to a C. There we go, disulfide is now formed. Now we need to add an OXT, calculate other modeling tools, add OXT to residue, add it, close it, refine it. Done! Right, so um, now all our blobs have been explained. Uh, we've fixed up the geometry of the incoming molecule. What we could do now is add in some waters and then we're done. And then we'll send it off to refinement. So calculate other modeling tools, find waters, find waters, close. If we want to review the waters, we go um, draw sequence, draw sequence view, I should say. Give ourselves a bit more room, click on number one, do a P, do a space, and we can look through our waters. Okay, um, then we're ready to refine. Um, and how you do that depends on which uh, software suite you're using. That's the end of this Coot tutorial describing how to do a bit of model building and ligand fitting on um, a crystallographic map.